Hello everyone, you are listening to You've Got 5 Options show on Ungdoms Radio. Tune in at 98.7 every Monday and Wednesday at 11.30 and every odd Friday at 2 o'clock. Join us while we are solving yet another life challenge and if you decide to share your problem with us, yours can be next. Hello everyone, this is Marta and this is Anna and also our lovely technician uh, Lasse, hi. <laughs> yes. And this is You've Got Five Options show. Yes, and we would like to welcome you on this beautiful almost afternoon, but not yet. And I hope that you started the week in a glorious manner. Definitely, you know, it's like still winter here, even though the spring should be here. So the tiredness is like a big topic. Yeah, actually, I was uh, today talking with my Ma- actually texting with Marta when we were getting to the radio that I understand the level of deprivation in Game of Thrones, because if they are so frozen all the time no no wonder they do all this crazy shit because it's like you know if it's really cold for so long and so dark i can totally understand that you can go mad and i think i'm going mad oh my god i'm going mad what about you lasse are you enjoying this beautiful prolonged winter uh no not at all no I think it's something new for, for Danes to have such a cold, cold weather on Mar- in March. Usually it's just grey. No, no, it's like this, but I, I'm never getting used to it. And and we Danish people, we always complain about the weather anyway. So, yeah, yep, we're okay. pretty good at that. Yeah, so guys, our brains are kind of unfrozen, but we are uh, having like a silent inner protest against uh, the weather. So, you know, we, we might behave a little bit weird today. But we do have a challenge, like always, to solve. And uh, I think it might be connected with the weather as well. It might be. Yes. And Marta will read it for you. Yes. So the challenge goes, I'm a musician. Music is my passion and something that I truly love doing. I was working in the music industry before and it brought me great satisfaction. But then my life changed. I moved to another country, got married, then divorced and currently I am co-parenting my six-year-old boy. I also have a full-time employment that is not connected with music, but it allows me to pay the bills. My challenge is that after I go back from work and then take care of my son, I feel tired. I don't really feel like doing anything music related. I don't have the time to work on it and my creativity is not there. My question is, How do I get back to creating and recording music while most of the time I feel exhausted and uninspired? Wow, that's quite a challenge, I think. Uh, Before we will go further, I was thinking about giving a name to our anonymous friend. And we actually had a discussion before we started the show. What should the name be? And we have a couple of options, even more than five. Among others, Hannibal. And what else did we have? Lucifer. (laughs) Hagrid. (laughs) <laughs> yes, yes, but I, I think we will settle down on Paul. Do we agree on Paul, guys? Paul is fine. Yeah. Yeah, Paul is less biblical, less dem- demonic. It's more like, yeah, Paul looks like a like a guy, like a normal guy. Not a mind-blowing name, but it's okay. Okay, so propose something else, Marta. Mind-blowing Lucifer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <clears throat> do you think that there are people who are calling their children Lucifer? I think so, yes. Hmm. Lasse, do you know any Lucifer? No, no, I don't. Do you know anyone with funny biblical name? Not funny. The uh, bi- Bible is very serious uh, with biblical names, like that kind of old school, hardcore biblical names. Like Jesus. <laughs> mm. Yes. No, no, I don't know any uh, Jesus, but... Uh, no, no, you I, don't? No. I know a few of those. A few of them. A few of those. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, I think... Uh, Back in the day, my ex-husband was working with a guy whose name was Moses, and he was a Dane. I know Moses as well. Yes, so actually Moses could be, maybe Moses or Mo. Mo. No, I think we will stick to Paul. I I, I think that our anonymous friend is not necessarily delighted with all of the things we are saying right now. Okay, so Paul, is it okay? Paul, is it okay? I don't (laughs) think he can answer. (laughs) Oh, yeah. We're so smart and funny. 
Okay, Paul. So your name is Paul. So our uh, lovely friend who is a musician and would like to create music again feels uninspired exhausted and he is missing his creativity and that is because he has at least this is what we got from the challenge description he feels tired because he has a full-time job that is not connected with his passion plus he also co-parents his six-year-old boy and after that he doesn't really feel uh, either inspired or creative or he doesn't have energy to do his music And I think that's actually pretty sad, to be honest. And now I started to think about Paul, like Paul McCartney, so it works better now. Okay, so now you accept the name. Yeah, it, okay. it, you know, the right vision. It's because Paul was not such a musician name for me. I'm sorry for all the Pauls that are musicians. It's just my own, uh, like, head, you know. Mm -hmm. But now that I think of Paul McCartney, it's much easier. Yeah, Paul McCartney. What other musicians with name Paul are there? Lasse? Sean Paul. Sean Paul. <laughs> Sean Paul. That's <laughs> yeah, Sean Paul. Maybe we should have gone with Sean. No, Paul McCartney. That's actually that's a that, that's I, I I think he's really famous now. Yeah, and but Sean musician. would have been an awesome name, you know. Sean actually would be, but sorry, Paul, you're not Sean. You're Paul. And Paul McCartney is a good guy. It's yeah. a good guy. He he made a lot of music. Yeah. Okay. And maybe actually that would be like a you know that premonition for you, Paul, that maybe soon you would be like Paul McCartney. Hmm? We definitely wish that for you. We definitely wish that for you. So, except of Paul McCartney and Sean Paul, we don't know any other musicians. If it will come, then I would like us to, you know, just say it. But I have looked at this challenge. Marta looked at this challenge. And one thing that struck me is that you actually know your passion. Because as you remember from our previous radio shows, many times we get challenges from people who, for instance, they don't know what they want to do. They feel like they would like to do more or they don't don't know what is their purpose, you know what your passion is, and that is music. The other thing is that you actually have worked in the music industry before, and you said that it brought you a great satisfaction. So you also tried it, and you know that this is something uh, fantastic for you. But here we have a situation when you know your passion, you know it's great, but life got to you, <laughs> if I might say so. I don't know, it, it, this was not supposed to sound uh, depressive, but you know, it's like life happened, right? So you got married, you got a child, uh, you got some uh, obligations, you got the job, you have to pay the bills. And now you feel like you are uninspired or you don't have creativity or energy to create. And actually, I think that I have lately also met a person like this. And Marta, you have also met a person like this. You know what? What comes to my mind is I was meeting recently a number of really inspired women, mm -hmm. women who really want to do something different with their lives. And I uh, met them in they are like some of them were like very young, like very young, inspired entrepreneur women, some of them in their 30s and some of them even older. And I kind of started to reflect back on it that I think there is really something weird that happens to people because I know also men that have been talking about it. When you're young, you feel like you can do anything. Very often people do think that, you know, I'm young and I will follow my dreams and uh, do a lot of different things. And then really something happens when we get married and have children. It's like some kind of like a biological maybe process takes over us because we suddenly start to think much more reasonable that we have to bring the money, we have to take care of the children and so on. And then I have noticed people then wake up again. But I started to see that pattern because when I reflect back on my life, I had those 10 years when I was mainly a mom. And I was really into, I mean, it was a beautiful period and it uh, it is also an amazing experience and you learn so so much from motherhood. So it's not at all like a wasted time or something like that. But when I reflect back on the way I was thinking before that, and then it's kind of like a different thinking and different feeling for 10 years. And then I wake up again. And I remember, like, sometimes I feel a lot of concepts I hear about read about they are new to me. But then I reflect back and I remember being there these 10 years before. So I started to reflect like really, really recently on this part that there may be something natural in the way we function when we get the children. So for sure it's psychological, that's for sure. But I also think there may be 
actual biological process that when we get our offsprings, <laughs> that we are really prone to first and foremost protect them, provide to them and so on, especially when they are very small. Yeah, I, I actually am really thinking about this because, you know, uh, the beauty of this show is that we get the challenge and we briefly discuss the options, but we never really discuss what we will say. So she just came out of nowhere with this revelation. Revelation. But it's very interesting what you are saying. And I think that there is uh, definitely uh, some sort of a uh, uh, truth to that. I think especially for women and men, please don't take it in the wrong way. Uh, it's really important for some period of time to calm down when the children are small because it's very biological that you have to take care of them. I think with men, maybe they feel a pressure that they need to provide now or to provide some kind of stability or financial security that might not be necessarily uh, biological. But you know what I was thinking? There are people because what you are saying is totally true. And I have observed the same thing. But there are some uh, exemptions, like there are people who are having children and they are still following their passions. And there are also people who are ch having children and they never wake up again. It's always, you know, I have been seeing Matrix again recently. Mm -hmm. And it, it is all, yes. Ooh, I'm impressed. What a movie. Oh my God. I saw Martha. it when I was young. Yeah. And uh, I loved it. It was great. But I saw it again now, like after at least 10 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's such an amazing movie, really. And with uh, with being a more mature person and so on, it has so many different meanings now. But I think it is about kind of like waking up out of a matrix. It can happen when you're young. It can happen when you have children. It, I imagine that there are some people who also are like, oh, man, I really want to be an inspiration for my children. I want to follow my dreams so that they can do that in the future for themselves. So I guess it, you can wake up anytime. But I think there is something really happening in our brains when we get those children. And of course, as always, we can control that because mm -hmm. we are more than our brains. So of course, we can do something about it. But I just started to reflect back on it when I thought about myself when I was young, then the 10 years of uh, motherhood of small children. And then now again, when my children started to grow a little bit, it, there is something to it. I would like to research that part. Google time. Yeah, actually, you are right. And uh, the person I was referring to at the very beginning when I asked you the question, we went to this alignment, awaken your purpose alignment meeting. No, it was living in alignment group, awaken your purpose meeting. And there were people who were searching for their life purpose. And among, I think, 13 or 14 people, I don't know how many were there, there was actually one guy who, who knew exactly what his passion is. He was, what was he doing before he was working with... Uh, animals he was traveling around the world and he he was no i don't remember it doesn't matter but Bi <coughs> biologic uh, some some kind of it was he was making a research it was something with marine biology biology and he was saying i was traveling the world i was living in hawaii and so on and it was wonderful i was living my dream but then i got married and then we got children and now i feel like i have to like resign from that to provide for the family and uh, and that was kind of like um, it was sad to hear you know uh, not because um, I think he will actually make it he will come back to his dream again but it was sad that people sometimes think in this way that okay now when I have a family now I have to resign from my dreams and I don't really think we should perceive it as a trade-off because if we perceive it as a trade-off there will be a part of us always missing yeah. But it's always a choice mm -hmm. that that we always have. First of all, establishing a family is a choice. And then how you run it, how much you want to pursue your dreams, because there are also different types of dreams. Yeah. If your dream is uh, traveling abroad, I don't know, maybe you want to be a soldier. Maybe you want to be a doctor, you know, that goes uh, those doctors without borders or mm -hmm traveling to tropical places and, and doing your bi biological research is a much more difficult type of dream to connect with the family than when you want to be an engineer and create something and you could do it locally, right? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's also different types of things to do and abilities 
to connect with yeah, having children. True. Yeah, I'm not sure what is Paul's situation, but we can say that he is trying at least because in his challenge, it is written that he wants to create again. So he didn't, that's a good thing. He didn't resign from his dream. He wants to make music. He wants to create again. He just feels tired, uninspired and not really creative. So at least we could say that in some sense he's awakened or he wants to come back to his dream. Can we agree with that? Lasse, you are awfully quiet today. You have to prove that you are not sleeping. Uh, I'm here. Yes, I agree. <laughs> you agree. Okay, awesome. So we have prepared actually five options and they are not exclusive or inclusive. You can take one option, you can uh, try two options, but I think it's, it's not a process because sometimes we have a process so you should kind of follow one after another. This time we have a couple of options but actually I think if you will use all of them Paul uh, this would give you the best effect. So option number one is take care of your body. Option number two set up your vision and goals. Option number three Start dreaming and keep yourself motivated. Option number four, routines and habits. Option number five, people around you. Surround yourself with like-minded people. So actually here we are pretty much touching upon all the aspects that are uh, helping us in, in living a, a, a certain type of a life. So your body and how you manage your body. Do you have a vision? Do you have goals? Do you feel motivated and energized to, full, to go for it? What is your routine? What is your habit? What are your habits? And what are the people around you? So I think it's pretty much comprehensive, I hope. Don't you agree? It's like a holistic approach to life, yes. Yes. But I also think that if Paul would take even one option and not necessarily uh, in the, mm, I would say, in order, he can still benefit from it. That's why I think it's, uh, it's quite interesting how this is structured. But OK, so first we have take care of your body. And actually, I was trying first to see what is the relation between being tired and, you know, a typical uh, physical, you know, condition of a human body. And, uh, well, there is a huge connection. I, I think this is not like a ground uh, shake breaking. Oh, my God, my English is off. Um, uh, groundbreaking. groundbreaking groundbreaking. What is with the shaking? It's also ground shaking, right? Yes, this is not a big news, but we have to take care of our bodies in order to feel rested. Uh, and I, I think this is obvious, but you know, I think that many times we simply forget about it. We forget about it that if we are going through this journey called life, we actually have a vehicle and that vehicle is our body. So, you know, it's like imagine you are going on a long trip and you are going with a car and you didn't, I don't know, change the oil. You didn't really put a gas in and, you know, the windows are falling apart and uh, something is wrong with a steering wheel. You will not get far. It's exactly the same with your body. You really have have to take care of uh, of your temple because this is where you live it's like your house yeah like your apartment for your heart mind and soul oh my god the I think I made a point. Guys, please yes. tell me I made a point. So, Paul, please take care of, uh, you know, get some good oil and take care of your gas. joke. <laughs> <laughs> And wear some glasses, I think you mentioned. And the steering wheel, I'm not sure what's the steering wheel. Is it our brain that I is the steering wheel? I don't want to <laughs> even make that connection here. What could be the steering wheel for the man? There can be many. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, you know, it's um, besides what Marta said, which was very, very wise and a little bit of sarcastic, I would say that uh, the most important thing is to check the very, very, very basic things. So do you have, do you get enough sleep? Uh, do you uh, take care of yourself in a way that you eat properly? Do you overreact with things like caffeine or alcohol? Do you eat too much processed food? Uh, what about your vitamins? Because guys, actually I was making a research for that and I want to say I'm not a doctor at all, but uh, especially in the winter time, and we live in Denmark, we don't know where Paul lives, simple things like the vitamin, you know, it's like the vitamin is uh, produced by your body when you are on the sun. And please tell me when have you seen the sun the last time, guys? I think two or three weeks ago, there was a sunny day. 
Yeah, yes, that, that sounds about right. That <laughs> sounds about right. And you know, it's like we don't really think about it, but I've heard that in Denmark that the vitamin deficit uh, at you know average Dane is one of the highest in Europe because people don't supplement it and they don't have a way to you know to like uh, produce it. Um, another thing is like you know silly things when it's winter, we tend to eat more fatty sugar things because we want to keep ourselves energized and we don't maybe take care so much about eating vegetables or fruits. I know it sounds boring and I feel like a teacher in a primary school that is trying to tell kids, please eat your veggies and please don't eat your fatty foods. But actually, I can say from my own example, I have sometimes those kind of periods when I'm super healthy and, you know, I'm working out and then I'm eating uh, also kind of clean and stuff. And then I don't have those periods. I have periods when I uh, eat um, a lot of sweets because I have a sweet tooth and I don't exercise and maybe I eat a lot of processed food and so on. And I can see immediately after a couple of days a week that I feel really, really way worse than I and than I was before. It, it's like it really is making a huge difference. I think, you know, recently, I mean, I always eat veggies. I am a vegetarian, so I always eat veggies. I have at least one meal a day always that is solely vegetables, meaning a salad. I eat a lot of those, eat fruits. Then the sweets come on and off, uh, of course, and I see a difference when I exercise regularly. It really makes a difference to exercise regularly, not exercising too much. That's not good either. Then you can get exhausted. But having the right amount of exercise is really making a difference for me. But I have noticed that over this, you know, seven months of winter, even if I eat healthy and exercise regularly and sleep properly, like what I consider properly is those seven hours, I still feel tired because we, I think, all the animals, humans and so on, we also need sunlight, you know. And I think that we forget that we are still natural beings. And in winter time, we may need to sleep and rest more. I consider if I get seven hours that it's a really proper good amount of sleep, but maybe it's only good for summertime when we have a lot of sunlight and I can be totally energized after those seven hours. Maybe in winter time I need nine. I mean, maybe I'm more like a bear and I should sleep the entire winter. Yeah, that would be awesome. I, I, actually, it's an awesome idea. Sorry for that. But I also feel tired. Actually, yeah, I totally agree. I think that uh, the season of the year and the amount of sunlight you are getting and also uh, the weather. And uh, I would like to say again, we are in Denmark where there is a lot of rain and wind and clouds. And I will stop now because that's already a very sad description. But uh, it is difficult to get naturally energized by your surroundings. So, Paul, we don't know where you are, but if you are living on some kind of islands, maybe like Paul McCartney in UK, then uh, you might be additionally affected by by this um, yeah terrible, long, cruel winter Game of Thrones style. Yeah, but Lasse, what do you think? Uh, I think you made some really interesting points, especially about uh, adapting your sleep pattern to the season. That is something I really haven't thought about before because I think I sleep kind of the same amount of hours no matter what time of year it is. But I, I can definitely feel the difference. I'm a lot more tired this time of year than I am during summertime, even if I sleep the same amount. So maybe also making like small changes, like adapting your sleep pattern. Maybe you need like an hour or two even more, you know, that's also uh, something that I think you need to think about when you live in, uh, in if you live in Denmark, you know, so yeah, yeah. that's an interesting point, actually. Yeah, but I, I think that if we would go down a little bit more to the practicalities, mm. the first thing I would advise for Paul is to actually uh, go to the doctor and check, uh, you know, the blood and, and the regular stuff. Because it happened to me, I think, four or five years ago, exactly in the winter time. It was January. I felt extremely weak and I didn't know what is happening. And I think at one uh, beautiful Sunday, I went out of bed and I kind of fell on the floor yeah it was it, it it wasn't as bad as it sound but i got really like freaked out and i went to the doctor and she made all the blood samples and i had a really low iron 
intake and she said that I need to take more iron. Uh, so uh, stupid thing like this. And then I started to talk with my uh, colleagues at work and they were like, yeah, I had the same. And um, then I also talked with other uh, colleagues and they said that they have the vitamin deficit because of lack of sunlight. So this is something really uh, basic because before we get into, of course, there can be also other reasons for being tire tired. There are psychological reasons and lifestyle reasons. But the first one are the physical and they are the easiest to rule out because you can go to the doctor, you can see your results or you can just look at your daily life and see how are you treating your body. And many times we think that, uh, yeah, probably it's this, but maybe not this. But for instance, I remember when I started to take more iron at the time, suddenly I felt so much better because that was just like a, a, a simple thing that was missing, you know, in my in my blood or whatever. So I think the very first step, if if Paul, you feel all the time exhausted is to just check yourself at the doctor for for uh, yeah for your blood results. And you know, it's not a surprise to anyone anymore. It's totally scientifically proven that there is a very direct connection between how you feel physically and how you feel emotionally, psychologically or whatever we call it. So of course, if you are physically drained, it's going to be quite difficult to be full of energy after a full day of work to start being creative. So that's natural. And you know, it's as simple as that. Take care of yourself. Be your very best friend. I mean, look at yourself as you would look at your child. If you see that your child is tired, is totally, you know, blue or whatever, what would you advise? <laughs> <coughs> Where did that come from? If okay. my child would get blue, <laughs> you would go to the doctor, right? I would go <laughs> to the doctor straight away. That's number one. But <laughs> Why? I think if my child is blue, it's kind of game over. I just won the award for the worst parent ever, by the way. You know, blue has two meanings. Yeah, ah, uh, blue like sad. Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I took it literally slash physically. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You are right. Okay. Anyway, the point is yeah. that if you would look at your friend yes, uh, and, he, and he's blue. <laughs> Uh, figuratively or literally, but more figuratively, yes. Then you would, yeah, of course you would say, go to the doctor, that's the first thing. And actually, I have a, a little story. Marta, you actually had uh, lately a little bit of a problem with your hand. That and actually turned blue. <laughs> <laughs> that literally turned blue. Uh, and we think it's because a lot of editing of, of the podcast. And uh, Marta, you have scheduled a visit at the doctor. And then I unscheduled because my hand stopped being blue. So I would like to say, no no judgment, by the way, Marta, but I think it's very typical because then I said to Marta, you know what? That's the funny thing. I would do the same, you know? You feel a little bit better. I don't need to go to that doctor anymore, right? And here, simple thing, you know, you might have a better day, Paul, and you are like, I don't need to get my blood results. Why? Just do it. It's simple. They take, unless you are like a freak when you see blood but come on just take the results and then as Marta said exactly because that's the first thing just to check if something is really missing and then there are other things like do you exercise too much or too few do you drink enough water do you eat more or less healthy do you take some rest do you have some okay maybe not exercise do you walk do you move yourself or do you sit all the time in front of the computer very basic questions and i would like you really to answer those questions and we have an article that is actually describing this option and there is more information there and as i said we are not doctors but it would be a great idea to start here to be sure that your body is functioning properly and you will hear more from us yes you will you will because Paul, that was only option number one. And we will uh, describe more interesting options for you. And don't turn blue. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye. You are listening to You've Got Five Options show. Remember that we are on air every Monday, Wednesday, and every second Friday. <laughs> 
Remember that you can visit our website www.you'vegot5options.com That is www.youvegot5 as a number options.com where you can submit your challenge and find our podcast. You can also find us on iTunes or any podcast app. Du lytter til din lokale radio i Aarhus på FM 98,7 MHz og 89.